So today in Yellowstone, we are coming to you all from the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. So that sound and the view behind me is that waterfall that starts sort of the process of this movement of water behind us. So if you do hear that, there is still snow on the ground out here. We are in Canyon area of Yellowstone National Park, which puts us kind of in the middle of the park. So we are coming from a very unique area today. And as we are going along on this program, we are going to be talking about water quality. And here in Yellowstone, it's kind of an important thing to have out here. But we're gonna start on a bigger picture and why does water matter? So thinking about that, water makes up 71% of Earth, our planet that we live on, and it makes up about 50 to 60% of our bodies. So water goes through us and it goes through the veins of the world and we use it in our everyday life. So it's something that we need to survive and that this world needs to survive. And why is water so important in Yellowstone? Well, because it also provides life and sources for everything here in the park. And there are things that can be affected by the quality of water, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And also, we will talk about how water quality is tested out here in Yellowstone. So what does it mean to have good water quality? And thinking about that when we're thinking about Yellowstone and that water quality, we've been testing water out here since 1889. So that's a pretty long time for water, water quality to be tested. And what does that mean to test it? So we'll test different things such as turbidity or the visibility within the water. So if there's dissolved particles or sediments floating around in the water, that will affect how different organisms can use that water or interact with it. We also check the temperature, whether it's high or low or right at the right spot. Temperature can affect also how our biotic factors use water out here. And we'll check pH, so whether it's acidic or basic, we want to make sure that that water is safe for both humans and animals to interact with it. So our good water quality can also be affected by its pH and dissolved oxygen. So like you and I, we also all breathe oxygen. So do, my, so do our animals that use water out here in Yellowstone. They might use the oxygen a little different in a form of dissolved in the water. So that will also get tested. And there are things out here in Yellowstone and throughout the entire world that can affect the quality of water. And when we're thinking about that, we'll maybe start with that turbidity that I first mentioned. So that visibility within the water. What are things that can affect visibility in the water? A lot of it comes from sediments and runoff. So if we lose vegetation in areas, we get erosion. So now that soil and that earth is moving around, whether it rains or there's wind or even people walking on it. And that soil ends up eventually in our water systems. And if the water is quickly moving, then those sediments get stirred up and they continue to move with the water, making it kind of hard to see through it, maybe making it harder for sunlight to penetrate through that water to support vegetation within that water. And another thing that can be affected out here in Yellowstone is that temperature of water. What are some of the most famous things people come out here to see? It's those hydrothermal features. Hydro meaning water, thermal mean, meaning warm. So sometimes warm water, especially close to those hydrothermal features, might not support life, or they might support life that we don't know about. And so that warm water can affect some of those larger species out here because it's too warm. Those hydrothermal features can also add dissolved minerals into the water that can lead to poor water quality. So water that we cannot drink, that we cannot recreate in. And so that's an effect of our water and the temperature. And finally, another thing that can affect our water quality out here is climate change. And so when we get warmer temperatures in months when we would normally have colder temperatures, now we might not get as much precipitation in the form of snow. Snow is an important form of precipitation out here in Yellowstone. We get heavy amounts of it inside the park. And as it comes down, as the seasons warm up, that snowpack melts. And once that snowpack melts, it runs into our river systems and our streams and our lakes. And that creates a swift moving water, higher levels of water, allowing for those species to be able to travel upstream to where they need to go to either create a safe habitat or a home for themselves. So without that heavy snowfall, 
we won't have as much water running through our river systems because if warmer weather comes through in our colder months, the precipitation might come down as rain. So that water is going to enter our river systems much earlier than we had expected. And as we continue on thinking about this water quality and how it affects Yellowstone, it's a big picture. And that big picture involves humans. So these rivers and streams in Yellowstone don't just stay in Yellowstone. They head out of the park and they travel either to the Pacific Ocean, maybe to the Atlantic or to the Gulf of Mexico, crossing thousands of miles across the continental US, creating different streams and rivers and different watersheds that then are maybe part of water that you use in your everyday life. And Ranger Zach is going to come on and he's going to talk to us about some of those animals, those biotic factors here in Yellowstone that use water, that are part of water and need good quality water to be able to continue life here in Yellowstone. Hello everyone and uh, thanks Ranger Kate for doing the first part of this video. Like Ranger Kate said, I'm going to be talking about how water quality affects the living things here in Yellowstone. And here in Yellowstone we have very pristine waters, some of the most pristine in the lower 48. And that's not only important for the aquatic species but also the terrestrial species as well. And here in Yellowstone we have no dams, so that means that the aquatic species have no nat or unnatural barriers that prevent them from moving around. And we also have very little pollution. So that means if you're an aquatic spe or a, a aquatic species <laughs> in the world, you would love to live here. And here in Yellowstone, we have 11 native species of fish here in the park. And they're very important for all the other animals that live here. As they come out of the lakes in the spring and into the streams, they become food for the terrestrial animals here in the park. And one of those very important species here is the Yellowstone cutthroat trout. And it's a very iconic species because you can tell what it is because of the slits on its gills have, are, are red and it's very visible as if you were an angler and you were to catch one. And these fish are also very important because they feed up to 16 other species of animals. And as they're coming up into those streams, they feed things like bears, um, osprey, they feed um, river otters and minks. So very important to uh, other animals here in the park. And also the water quality is very important to this, to this animal as well. Um, they like to have cold, clear water like we have here in Yellowstone. And that's very important because cold, clear water has a lot of oxygen in it. As water heats up, the oxygen content goes down and it dissipates throughout the water. So the cold water is very important. We also have very clean, clear water here in Yellowstone and that's very important for the fish. If you think of murky water is the same as how hard it is for us to breathe in a smoky, polluted environment. Um, it's similar to the fish, as when the water is going through its gills, it's going to have a tough time breathing. Um, so that's a little bit about how water quality affects a species in the park. Now I want to talk to you about a species that affects the water quality. And that right here is the beaver. And the beaver is a really iconic animal. It does a lot for us here in the park. It can be called a keystone species, which is one of those buzzwords that we use, and it means it affects all these other species in the food chain, in the food web, and cascades down. And they've also been called engineers, or ecosystem engineers, because they can completely change an ecosystem. And some of you might know why. It's because they build these things called dams. And as you can see, this dam has dammed up the small stream, and it made this beautiful riparian area that is good for a lot of species here in the park, and it's also good for the beaver. So the beaver will usually eat aspens, willows, and those things that love the riparian area. And by building the dam, it builds the habitat for these species of animals. So it's really this cool interaction that they have with each other. They're almost like farming their own product that they build their structures and that their food source is made out of. And beavers also have this other really cool thing they do with the dam. They affect the water quality. So by building a dam, they slow down the stream and the sediment has time to drop to the bottom. And that really clears up the water and then the clean water comes out the other end of the dam. And also by slowing down the water, they can also, the pollutants will drop to the bottom of the water and they become this like pollution sink that collects all the pollutants and the clean water comes out, almost like a natural filter. 
So I'm gonna show you some of these really cool adaptations that a beaver has to living in an aquatic environment. And I'm gonna kind of build myself into a beaver by showing you these adaptations. So I'm gonna start from the, the top down. And beavers have this really cool thing they can do with their ears. They have a valve in their ears that work like earplugs and keep the water in, out of their ears. If you ever had swimmer's ear or something like that, it's not very pleasant. So beavers have a natural way to keep water out of their ears. They also have a natural nose flap. And again, if you've ever had water come out of your nose, it really hurts and stings. So they have a natural nose flap. I'll put it on. I'll probably talk like Daffy the Duck for a little bit, but I'm gonna take it off. But it closes off their nose, which is really cool. Beavers had a, an adaptation. Their food source are trees and bushes and willows. So they have these teeth that never stop growing. So they can continually keep chewing on trees um, without ever losing their teeth really cool adaptation uh, that they have there. And here's a, a, pit or a uh, an image of what it looks like when they're carving out. It almost looks like the the tree has been getting whittled, like as if you're a little stick or if you're cutting down a tree with a hatchet. Um, some other really cool adaptations. I got a beaver pelt here. Kind of hold it up. Really cool. Is the fur. So the fur is really important because they love the clean, clear water that's very cold. So if they're living in this water and having to dive in it in the wintertime, they need to be able to stay warm. And this fur is very dense and it's almost gonna act like a wetsuit and keep the water out. And then it's also gonna keep the heat into their bodies. So very important is the fur. Another really cool adaptation they have is this giant tail. And this tail is a little smaller because it's dehydrated, but generally they're really big and it's gonna store a lot of fat for them. And it's gonna be an energy source throughout the winter when food is less available and they're less able to get at it. And it's also gonna act as a rudder as they're going through the water and keep them upright and steer them around as they're swimming through the water. And it has a third reason they have it or a way that they use it. And they're gonna use it to slap the water or the top of a dam to signal for danger. So a lot of really cool adaptations. Um, I'd love to hear about adaptations that you know about an aquatic animal in your area. And thinking about all these adaptations and bringing water full circle Water has other resources here for humans um, that we use it for. Uh, fishing is very common here in Yellowstone. We have over 50,000 anglers every year come to Yellowstone and catch fish out of here. Um, it's water sports, uh, people swim in the lakes, um, and things like that are very important. And our clean water is not only important for people who come into the park to use it, but it also flows downhill and goes into other parts of the US and the world. So it's very important that our clean water here starts here and then we deliver clean water to other areas. Um, it can be used for things like agriculture and stuff like that. Um, so thinking about that, where does your water come from? Uh, from Kate and I and everybody here at Yellowstone, thanks for watching our video and we'll see you some other time. Bye.